Okay. Good day to everyone joining us here and from home, from all over the world, and a very wintry but warm welcome to all to the We Are Europe event. Welcome to Uleobori, Dabra Bajalavat, we all. Today we will be speaking about the future of Europe in this event, which is part of a series of events called We Are Europe, organized by the Finnish government. In all, our event is co-organized by the Prime Minister's Office of Finland, City of Oulu, Council of the Oulu Region, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Finland, and the Chair of Barents Euro Arctic Council. You can follow this live stream, live stream broadcast from newspaper Kaleva's website and also from the Finnish government's YouTube channel. So this event day has two parts. Right now, you are following the youth event, which gives the youth from Barents Euro Arctic area a chance to have a say on the future of Europe. The event will facilitate and enable cross-border dialogues for youth coming from Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Russia. The second part of the day will start at half past three, when we will have an open coffee event in Cafe H2O in Valve Cultural Centrum in downtown Oulu. We warmly welcome all citizens of Oulu to hear greetings from this event in Finnish from Minister for European Affairs, Tytti Tuppurainen. Ninni Norra, Finland citizens' representatives in conference plenary and participants from this event from Oulu, Vera Adalmina Irvankoski, who will also be joining us in H2O. So please do join and say your greetings about the future of Europe. So the Conference on the Future of Europe is a unique and timely opportunity for European citizens to debate on Europe's challenges and priorities. The Finnish government is organizing a series of events called We Are Europe under the conference. The series has around 20 events all over Finland and the Minister for European Affairs, Tytti Tuppurainen, is leading the process along with 11 other government ministers. Today is all about listening to the youth of our region. And the participants in this youth event have been working during the morning on four different thematic working groups. In those discussions, we've heard what kind of thoughts, ideas, hopes and fears the youth from northern part of Finland and from Barents area might have regarding the future of Europe. The discussions in these thematic working groups will be based on pre-work done in schools under the UNESCO network. And the working group dialogues were organized in a timeout format, and a professional timeout coach has moderated them. Next, we will hear the conclusions and ideas from each working group by one of the working group members. After the round of conclusions and ideas, we will have a panel discussion based on the presentations from each working group. The participants in this panel will be the members of the working group, but also Ms. Tytti Tuppurainen, Minister for European Affairs and Ownership Steering in Finland, and also Ms. Mirja Vehkaperä, the Chair of Oulu City Council and Conference on the Future of Europe Plenary Member. But now, without any further ado, let's move on to the presentation of the working groups. And firstly, we welcome to the floor Adalmina Irvankoski from Finland and the working group uh, number one, which focused on topics like values, rights, rule of law, democracy and security. Please welcome Adalmina Irvankoski. Okay. <laughs> So our groups was the group one, values, rights, rule of law, democracy and security. And at first we talked in pairs and then in big group about what worried us about the after aforementioned things. We talked about many people were worried about human rights happening in the EU and around the world, especially in Poland, Hungary and Belarus. We also talked about the hybrid attacks in Poland by Belarus. COVID was also, of course, a worry, and vaccination rates around the world, and how we haven't done enough as you to help other people. 
the representation and rights of minorities were also a concern. We were worried about extremist groups and in Europe and the EU's inability to do anything about them. Even with all these fears and worries we had, we ended the discussion with a hopeful note. We will talk about how young people give us hope and how and how looking back and seeing how we have come forward so much in only a short time that we can and will evolve. And we had a very fruitful discussion and very calm and everyone could bring their opinions and experience forward. Even though we had a very different experience and point of view, we all had same worries and same hopes for you and for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Adalmina Irvankosti. The range of topics is absolutely mesmerizing, and we will just be continuing with the presentation and hear even more thoughts and ideas. So let's welcome to the floor group number two and their representatives, Armida Hamalainen. And they focused on topics like environment and climate change. Please welcome Armida Hamalainen. Uh, my name is Armida Hamalainen. I'm from the discussion group number two. And as said before, we discussed about environment and climate change. And we had a really great conversation, but here are just some of the topics that we discussed about. So first, weather and preserving our four seasons. Knowledge and science, what to do, and hope seeing our youngsters and politicians take action. And about the four seasons, as uh, mentioned earlier this morning, it's really special how we have four different uh, seasons here in Finland and other northern countries. We are starting to worry about the fact that they are kind of fading away. Then, uh, youth has a big impact. Technology is very important to fight against climate change. Uh, seeing concrete actions taken at the local levels give hopes. Climate change is not optional. Rising of the sea levels. We need a change in attitudes and fighting against climate change. People need to listen to indigenous people and notice the power that they have. Social media and recycling brands gives hope. Events like these also give hope and are really important. Uh, the impact of climate change on cultural rights and economical position. Uh, people are more connected and have more information uh, through social media, uh, etc. Um, misinformation and lack of willingness to take action and protecting biodiversity. Thank you. Thank you, Armida Hamalan. We can't wait to discuss these topics even further in a panel in a, mo in a moment. Now let's welcome group number three, which was stronger economy, social justice, jobs, education, youth, culture, sport, and digital transformation, and their representative, Daria Zaigovskaya. Hello, my name is Daria, and in our modern world, the topic of education and its connection to job and to immigration, and especially the young, is more important than ever. And I would like to thank our group for the insightful and fruitful discussion. We had a really diverse group. We had both high school and university students, including exchange students, and also people with families and uh, young children. And we, in our discussion, we first started talking about what worried us about the future of Europe. And we shared our personal experiences and struggles uh, in terms of education, mental health and uh, career prospects for both European Union citizens and immigrants. And uh, we believe it's important to note the uh, inequality of opportunity 
And let me explain what we mean by that. Uh, it's uh, an open secret that European Union is uh, struggling. There is a deficit with uh, young professionals, so uh, new t fresh talent. And of course, yes, there are a lot of job opportunities for international specialists and young professionals. However, in reality, uh, it's often limited to technical jobs and uh, jobs in software development, which leads to young people, very talented, really smart people with uh, master's degrees, with PhDs working low-skilled uh, labor jobs and uh, they just could not find a good profession abroad, unfortunately. We also discussed uh, the matter of mental health availability and uh, it's a sad fact that people have to wait in lines until they could finally get the help they deserve and they need. And we believe it's important to note that mental health and uh, it's an access to mental health specialists is not a privilege, it's a right. And people shouldn't wait for it to happen. And uh, another issue that we talked about was the young, pe young people's voices and how to raise them. And we believe that we shouldn't have uh, separate meetings for older politicians and young people, like that should be separate events. And we should sit at one table and discuss our problems and issues together. But don't get me wrong, it's not only the negatives that we talked about in our groups, we also discussed the prospects and hopes that we had for the future of Europe. And we couldn't uh, help but mention Erasmus programs, of course, and uh, European Youth Counseling program. There is still hope. There are barriers, of course, but uh, a lot of things uh, are being done. More scholarships, maybe no tuition fees maybe we'll see where it leads us and we have more young people in power we have more women in power and uh, i would like to say that uh, we have the brightest example with us today is of course uh, i'm talking about pavi pavi Layala, the mayor which uh, has which we have with us today so and uh, we uh, I would like to finish with uh, saying that in Europe you can and you should be yourself. You can and you should feel safe and protected, be respected, no matter where you come from, what your education background is. European Union is uh, for everybody and it's important that we shape the future. It's important that we people who have struggles today make sure that people in the future, people who come after us, do not have to face them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Daria Zaykovskaya and group number three for, uh, three for these very important points, which we will be discussing in a panel in a moment, which also is a very diverse panel. Now let's welcome group number four with the topic North Arctic and Rural Areas and their place in Europe and their representative, Maxim Marchenkov. Thanks. Uh, first, I would like to say that this is a, a kind of a huge honor and pleasure for me being a Russian national to deliver several ideas of our group related to the uh, EU, EU governance uh, here in Oulu. And uh, yeah, we're talking about the northern Arctic and rural areas um, in regarding to the European affairs. And uh, we have uh, five stickers, but uh, you know, the ideas uh, can be developed from each sticker quite uh, uh, in, in the long run. So yeah, first uh, we should say that uh, regarding the youth, the first uh, thing that uh, is addressed in the northern and Arctic and rural areas as well is the emigration of the young people uh, from northern areas uh, and usually they tend to migrate to the bigger cities sometimes in, the, in their countries, sometimes in neighboring countries and the reason for this emigration is basically uh, searching for more opportunities to uh, use. And uh, the rest of the stickers are some kind of ideas how these uh, opportunities can be uh, constructed and created in their own uh, towns, municipalities, uh, villages and other areas uh, in the north and in the Arctic. Uh, so one of the key uh, points here is to develop the education field uh, in the northern, in the Arctic areas uh, to uh, because education is the first um, kind of opportunities hub that uh, the youth uh, gets to face uh, after they uh, graduate from secondary schools. And um, of course, uh, 
there are many ways that uh, the education can be um, developed, uh, especially taking into account the digital transformation, like different massive online open courses, uh, very, uh, various other uh, method methods of distant learning could be also implemented. Um, so, yeah, uh, and this uh, also, are the, the digital transformation uh, gives the opportunity to develop the education in the rural areas as well. Uh, the other thing that is um, quite uh, connected to the education field is the area of research. And you know that the Arctic and the second group has presented this result. The Arctic is now facing climate changes and very many environmental ch challenges. And in this uh, regard, uh, the huge research activity is to be developed in the region. And it is being developed nowadays. And um, that's why the research in the Arctic is also a field that is... Uh, uh, to be uh, filled uh, by the new specialists from the youth and the development of the Arctic research, uh, environmental monitoring, climatic activities is also a way to um, um, make the Arctic region more attractive for the youth, which uh, is somehow feeling this environmental challenge in their personal way. And uh, the transportation and other uh, types of infrastructure are also a point that um, is the reason for the emigration of the people from the rural and northern areas. And that's why we thought that there could be several uh, ways how this uh, transportation uh, system should be developed. Uh, for example, there are cases of uh, small aircrafts and small airports located in the rural distant areas, remote areas but also maybe some maritime transportation where it's possible. And, uh, but of course, the development of the transport system should be um, uh, regarded with the environmental concern in this field, because this is the Arctic, and in the previous point we talked that the environmental challenges are very important in terms of the development and sustainable development of the Arctic areas. And uh, last but not least, uh, the... Uh, Cooperation and uh, various means of international cooperation is also a very uh, significant point for the development of the Arctic areas. Uh, this cooperation could be um, conducted in various fields, education, NGOs, uh, other, uh, many other fields like the civil sector, like the cultural exchanges, uh, indigenous issues, etc. And there are already many mm, instruments to, for this uh, cooperation to be implemented, like the Erasmus Plus programs, the networks within the University of the Arctic, the NEFCO and uh, uh, support of the Norwegian Baron Secretariat, and there is a financial mechanism uh, uh, starting uh, from next year within the International Baron Secretariat, which is also a huge asset, as we see, and also many cross-border cooperation programs supported by the EU with uh, the Russian regions, for example, are also a good example in this cooperation model. So probably the, this cooperation in many ways uh, should be also upheld and developed further. Yeah, so basically these are these ideas and probably we could discuss it further. Thank you, much, Maxim Marchenkov. Yes, we will, is the answer. We'll be discussing them even further. But now also, last but not least, we had a fifth group which was working completely remotely, virtually, and their topic was the role of youth in the European Union. And their thoughts will be presented by Irina Pirozinskaya via Zoom. So, Irina, I wonder if you can hear us calling you. Olo is calling you. Yes, I hear you guys. Do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. The, the Zoom is yours. Yes, um, our group, group number five, the role of young people in uh, AO decision making. And I uh, thank you all guys um, to make a very interesting decision or brainstorming. And uh, I have to say that we live in a very strange time as a COVID in air challenge or task, which was important two years ago. Uh, was overlapped uh, by healthcare focus. And I'm gratefully thankful that humanity uh, managed to make vaccines and healthcare people uh, sacrifice their time or sometimes life uh, and always on standby. Thank you very much. But uh, these difficult times can be a time of changing. And we, some young people, uh, have to be open mindful uh, and uh, positive. Uh, 
we have to alarm Elle about ourselves and we exist and we have an opinion. And um, uh, now I wanted to talk about uh, some tasks we uh, discussed on uh, this brainstorming session. The first one was children and uh, young people are always heard at schools and we are very grateful for this. Uh, but we are a little concerned about uh, um, this uh, thing and uh, ideas uh, taken up in, into account. Is it uh, important for EO? Um, uh, because EO, it's not a topic in discussion. Uh, young people are talking only about local issues. issues. Um, we, uh, you guys, EO, have to introduce young people uh, the possibility to express themselves on uh, AO level area. Also, we are a little uh, concerned about education and healthcare in the future. We, are, uh, we want to have some wide um, uh, healthcare, for example, uh, uh, sub substitute uh, dentist or IVF, so psychological help, so um, like this. Uh, you know, at the living condition Norway, in, in Norway and uh, Finland in the north, uh, are tough taxes and prices are high, uh, houses market are also high, cost of living are very high. We have well, we have to deal with it. And young people, it's uh, sometimes not so rich. We just uh, finish with um, school and high school and we have to establish the base. Uh, that is why it will be nice to have some reduction in the taxes um, that we can establish this base. Um, and young people worried about the future because this future and decision uh, always made by parents. And um, we have to think uh, by ourselves because on, in uh, 30, 20 years, it will be us which make a decision. So uh, I really think that uh, young people uh, will express uh, feelings, will express ideas and we uh, will be um, much more better in this. We will define our um, ideas, we will prioritize, and uh, I think we will run the world in the future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Irina Pironskaya and group number five. Now, with those words, I would also like to invite to the stage Minister Tuppurainen and the chair of the Oulu City Council, Mrs. Vehka Perä. Which one? Well, I think you can freely choose. Okay. There's just one <laughs> right now. But Minister Tuppurainen and Oulu City Board Chair Vehkaperä, um, the wonderful youth representatives have already warmed up, giving us some thoughts and ideas. So I'd like to ask from you, uh, what are your initial reactions to the presentations we just heard from the youth representatives? Can I just start by saying that I'm absolutely delighted by your presentations and by your ideas and, and thoughts that you have shared today. I'm astonished by the high level and the depth uh, in your presentations and, and in your conversations today. Congratulations, you really can deliver to the European discussion. And what is first and foremost is that even though many of you raised some difficulties and, and uh, difficult topics and you didn't avoid uh, mentioning challenges and, and so on, there was a sense of hope in many of the outcomes that you presented and, and that gives me hope mm. and it, it encourages us. So thank you so much. It was worth organizing this event. Yeah, I'm very happy that you all youth people are here in, from the parents uh, area. Uh, in Oulu this, this day and the couple of days. And what I just heard 
uh, the, the opinions about the future of Europe. It's amazing. You have uh, so good uh, um, uh, future plans that we, where we should, should go and what, what we really have to do. We don't have just have to, to, uh, to talk with each other. So we have to, to listen the youth people more and more, the ideas, the, the, um, uh, the hope to the future. And then, then we have to act as well, not just listening and, and uh, talk, but just act together. I think we can all agree 100% to what you just said. Um, now we are kicking off the panel, but I would like to remind the audience here and at home that we would like to keep, keep, uh, keep this discussion as active and engaging as possible. So if you have any questions at any point, comments, views on the topics we're discussing, here you can just raise your hand and we'll, Mike will find its way to you. And also at home you can send your questions using the chat function and we'll be getting those questions out to the panel as soon as possible. So let's make this discussion look like you in terms of what we want to discuss. But as a, as a warm-up thing, I would like to say that a couple of months ago, Oulu was chosen as the European Capital of Culture 2026. And before Oulu, Buda in Norway will be European Capital of Culture in 2024. So this is not only great news for our region, but the people who also live here. But even more interesting are the themes that here in Oulu led the bid to become the capital of culture. These were brave hinterland, cool contrasts, and wild city. And I think we can all notice a common theme here. They actually concern us. So what if we start the discussion by extrapolating these themes into our whole region and discussion today? So word hope was mentioned. And if we start from the other side of the contrast, the positive side, panelists, what are your thoughts on what are the great things in our region that we should put into spotlight even more? Because even though we are far, we should also be in the center of attention. But what those things actually are, your opinions on this. Would you like to start the youth, youth one? Um, well, innovation and education are really the strengths of your Oulu and the region. And nature and the with nature and urban rural and urban together close to each other is really great thing. Well, I have only come to Oulu several months ago and uh, before that I had only known two things about Oulu. Oulu University and Air Guitar <laughs> Championship. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, only really two yeah. things. And then I started digging and uh, finding more information. So I think that it's something that iconic, maybe events, maybe symbols, maybe people that make city recognizable and make people want to come here. Well, Air Guitar Championship, come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that? I haven't. <laughs> Uh, we have a uh, quite uh, um, uh, the culture here in in the, this level of of Europe. It's it's something very 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 in unique, and 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 we are proud about it. And we want to show the the people in Europe and all rest of the of the world that how we are living here, how we are uh, spending our holidays or and weekends here, what we are eating. In, in, in this part of Europe, and, and what is our culture here in, in Oulu and, and this region and, and North part of Finland as well. This is very, very special, uh, and we want to do also the climate, uh, culture climate change in, in the Oulu region, because we are famous on digitalization and, 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 and in infor information uh, technology a lot, but we need a culture here in, in all region, and we want to show all the world what kind of culture we have here. Armida Maxiv, uh, what kind of points do you have? Well, is this uh, about the hope that we have in about Yes, what are the positive things? things in our region that should be put in the spotlight mm. even more? Well, probably the way that 
the youth is so active in uh, changing things and we are really interested in um, improving stuff and especially in the social media, we are really spreading the information about what's going on, what, what needs to be changed. I, that really gives me hope how interested and how interested we are in changing things. And uh, maybe several words about the uh, research and development and innovations that uh, Olu is also a leading city in. Uh, it is also very important uh, and for the, for the young people as well because some uh, people, some young people after graduation uh, decide to become researchers and, or innovators and they enter the sector and so Olu is a, a city and a region of opportunities for the young researchers and innovators and inventors. And one more aspect I would like to emphasize is actually I represent the city of Arkhangelsk which is a sister city to Olu and that's why I'm like uh, double delighted to um, be delivering some speeches here today as well and hopefully the research and development and innovation sector are also uh, will also be the fields where our sister cities would uh, cooperate in the future too. Yeah, Eric Gitar mentioned and <laughs> did you know that they were our friends that invented this idea as they were young Tapani Laulanen and Jukka Takalo, they just had this crazy idea that let's make air, not war. <laughs> the, yeah. the whole idea was to promote world peace and to do it, uh, you know, ecologically. Air guitar doesn't spend much energy <laughs> <laughs> and it spreads uh, good mood and good vibes throughout the world. And now Oulu is known as the capital of air guitar world championships and it's becoming the next European uh, capital of culture in 2026. I feel proud and the variety of cultural competence here is, is absolutely astonishing. My father is a violinist. He plays, uh, played violin in the Oulu City Symphony Orchestra. Which is, yes, yes. And, and the Oulu Symphony Orchestra is the uh, northernmost uh, full symphony orchestra in the world. So we have it all and that's, I think, due to the unprejudiced mind of, of the Nordic people. And that's something that I hope that we all share in common, that even though we have long distances and we live you know, far away from each other, we have the means to overcome these distances and, and this Nordic atmosphere makes us friendly and, and open-minded. And at least that's something that I want to cherish and that's the atmosphere that I feel here today. I'd like to think that the Arctic is actually a hot spot. We are not far away from anywhere, but instead we're actually in the middle of everything. The focus from the superpower side is pretty much on the Arctic and, and that's us. We are there. So let's pay attention to climate change. Let's pay attention to research and innovation and culture and, and young people. Absolutely wonderful points. And the things that you listed, I would say, are the tools with which we can dr drive change. So now I'm going to be challenging you a bit and asking, how can the Barents area, all of the things you listed, education, innovation, culture, knowledge, active youth, be pushing forward better cooperation in the European Union and beyond? And what are the most important topics that we should now think about and push the change forward? Well, one of the ways to push innovation and education is there are already a lot of exchange programs, li exchange programs like the Erasmus, and to strengthening of those programs and making more of them, making it possible to go to other countries and learn in different universities and different places. That is really important. Yeah, like I agree. Education is. I'm very passionate about education, and I think that that's. Probably, uh, I would argue that's the most important part, <laughs> but still. And I think, yes, Erasmus international programs, maybe more cooperation with uh, more distant cities, uh, like not only the ones on the border, for example, of Russia, but uh, further on as well. Also, uh, make education more accessible for people outside of the European Union, I would say that, because there is a lot of international talent, but uh, if, we, if we just make it more attractive, if we, if we just make it more accessible, that would change everything. I pretty much agree with the points that were <laughs> given. <laughs> It seems that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, probably we should also underline the uh, 
uh, that uh, the Barnes cooperation is a cooperation built on the people-to-people -people cooperation, first of all, and uh, probably this foundation for this uh, trans-border, cross-border cooperation is uh, the one that should be also demonstrated to, into the EU level because the uh, personal connections uh, that produce good relations between various cities and regions and institutions uh, of the Barnes region um, uh, at all, it makes up uh, some kind of the regional identity, peacefully based identity, I would say, and cooperation-oriented identity, which I guess is a good showcase to demonstrate on the EU level. Yeah, I, I used to be a teacher in the in the primary school, so I'm I'm very happy that you <laughs> raised the education in the top top of the level. It's 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 important, and we should uh, should take care of of uh, the the opportunities to have good education uh, system in 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 north part of uh, of uh, Europe and in Barents area as well, and in Europe as well. And but uh, one 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 thing is uh, the digitalization. It's not the solving in in every problems, but. Uh, because because we are in in Oulu and and we are we are very famous about digitalization and services with with that, I would like to see that we can solve uh, uh, environmental and and climate change problems and energy issues in a digitalization way, and and it it, it will give us a, a opportunity to to solve the problems, as well. Yeah, I think one of the the biggest you know. It's not a secret, but let's say phenomena behind the success of the EU is that countries have discovered that together we are stronger, that we can do cross-border cooperation in Europe in order to solve problems that also crosses, you know, borders. And the Euro-Arctic uh, Council and, and the Barents region, we can find somewhat the same recipe. And you mentioned, Max, people to people, and I find that extremely important that with this fora we can also reach people and, and talk to people and increase a level of awareness of the possibilities that we have when it comes to education, that we have when it comes to reachers, opportunities or enterprises, starting enterprises and, and so on. So I think we should utilize the instruments that we have in cross-border cooperation uh, throughout the Barents region, make the most out of them, and also use, use the Erasmus Plus program that, that you mentioned. Because we have increased the finances to the Erasmus Plus by 50% compared to the previous program period, and it's 22 billion euros now for the upcoming seven years. So there is a lot of resources for Erasmus, and, and I think you guys, you're the best ones to make how to use them to the extreme. Yeah, and I think that when we want to use uh, the youth's opinions, I think that we should think of the places where we actually are and where we get interested. And I think that, you know, about the education, I think that school is a place where everyone can get access to giving your opinion. For example, you, um, not everyone might be in, uh, like, hobby activities or not everyone has access to the net. So I think that we should give every young adult or young teenager an option or like opportunity to tell what they think about certain topics in schools because I think that that's a place where we can reach all of them in some sort of way. I have a question. So um, you mentioned collaboration, face-to-face -face interaction, and these are topics that we've been talking about for years, right? But right now we are in a situation where um, a global pandemic has basically halted all cooperation, face-to-face -face interaction. Are we in a risk uh, that it will never come back to the uh, situation where it was and what we should do right now to make sure that these kind of things actually will happen? What can we do? What are the instruments and so on? Well, I definitely do agree that we are in a risk, that we lose that opportunity. But I think that 
um, if we want to, when I focus on, you know, going to schools and informing uh, the students, I think that we should get someone, just one professional to tell them about the stuff. Because when a teacher or someone from the school tells you, they might not take it as seriously or as an important thing. But when a professional comes to your school and actually tells about the stuff, I think that, you know, even just one person being there and telling you about it uh, can really, like, make them think, actually, about the stuff. And we don't need a lot of people to tell about it, just one professional per school, and to actually inform uh, the youth about what's happening and what needs to be changed, or ask for their opinion. Or, you know, we could, like, create uh, discussion forums online, of course, or quizzes for the students, but something that really makes them commit and answer because we want a lot of answers when we want opinions and di different perspectives. So I think that we can use only one person and then of course we can uh, use electricity or computers, everything that we have today that we have created. Let's take one more point from, uh, from the panel and then we have an audience question maybe related to the topic. But um, other panelists, what do you think? Are we finding ourselves in a big risk that we can't go back to? To, li to, uh, to live in online or, <laughs> or in, in uh, remotely uh, uh, panels and, 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 and seminars, is, it's not really alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I need uh, physical uh, appointments and, and meetings and, and, and conference like, like this, this one is. You had an amazing um, working, working group discussing uh, uh, a few um, uh, minutes ago. And, and uh, I think uh, we should um, uh, focus on, on t t um, in the future t to meet each other, but we can also use those uh, uh, digitalization in, in our meetings as well. Yeah, they provide opportunities. Yes. Um, can we get the audience question? The light is actually blinding me a bit, so... <laughs> uh, yes, there's the question. So, microphone is coming to you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go back a little on Armida's um, previous point on um, how us youth should be given the option to actually bring out their voices at school. So um, also uh, at my own school, I've personally seen many people think that their cap for participating is a little too high. They're like don't have the courage or so. And we should maybe normalize like doing stuff like this, like we're today. Um, we should normalize it because many people think it's something like super, super special. But it's, it's actually this is like, it's very, very chill, very like casual uh, here. And I think we should really encourage participation even more and like make it more concrete not just like talking about these things but also like show the youth how their deeds can do stuff we should bring something into action that has been um, that we have been told to do by us the youth Thank you. Absolutely wonderful point, and I think you deserve a round of applause for being the first yeah. one to ask a question. Thank you so much. So we need more concrete, concrete action. So uh, do, do you want to comment on what we just heard from the audience? Well, well I, I, I'm sorry. You call, I'm sorry. You I definitely <laughs> agree with you and your point. I think it seems like it's almost impossible for some teenager to get into politics or changing things. Uh, and it really takes a big step. Uh, not everyone is capable of coming in front of a stage and actually talk to people online, offline. And I, I definitely think that it should be normalized and it should be made easier for the youth to reach to politics and changing things. And I want to grab onto your point about the gap. In the, it's very unfortunate that the people who participate seem to participate in everything and like I belong to many groups in my school and outside of it. And then there are people who don't participate in anything. And it's very unfortunate that there is a big gap 
between those who don't participate and those who do. Maybe, maybe we can get encouraged by the European Union common values, which really much uh, puts emphasis on equality between everybody, that we're all equal, no matter who you are, you are entitled to be yourself uh, as respected as others. I wrote down many of, of the phrases that, that were shown on the screen earlier, that Europe is a change for better, uh, and everyone should be respected, no matter what kind of, kind of degree he or she has, and, and so on. And that's what I can read also in the European Union treaties that want, want to underline our common values. So I hope that everybody feels you know, safe to be who they are and, and express their opinions. Only racism and hate speech is excluded, which actually is good because in, in, in an atmosphere where you need to be afraid that you get bullied, it, it doesn't really encourage anyone. So, so thank you for pointing it out, and I think that me and Miria, we were, mm. we, are, we are about the same age that when we, we were in the school, it wasn't that easy as it is now, so I mm. really <laughs> give you credit for being so well prepared for uh, a situation like this. And in earlier life, there, there wasn't so that kind of opportunities to do to, uh, to, to the cooperation with uh, uh, in, in international level with, with youth, and next year, it's it's a uh, youth year in in European Union, so maybe that that is the the year when we can raise the questions and and the voice of youth more and more in in the in the in a in a level. I'll give the floor to Maxim, and then we will have a question from the audience again. Yeah. yeah. So the question was devoted to how to make uh, the youth participation in all the directions of the decision making normal, normalized in a way. And I would just maybe provide you with a small example how, for example, the Barons Regional Youth Council is trying to develop this field. Like, for example, our council is. Uh, 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 making uh, efforts uh, to provide every uh, working group under the auspices of the Barons Cooperation with the representative, uh, so the youth uh, voice would be heard at every working group in the Barons Cooperation. So I guess this is just well, since uh, the event is dedicated to the Barons Cooperation as well in general. So I would like uh, to provide this example so everyone is aware that the youth of the Barons region is presented uh, in the Barons Cooperation structures as well. Thank you, Maxim. Here, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And a question from the audience. Yeah. Is it okay for an older lady <laughs> 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 to ask a question? Um, uh, many thanks for your comments and uh, further comments to that. Uh, there's something that uh, I, I hope I can phrase my uh, question in the right way. Um, you both refer that uh, there is, a, let's say, a big step for many young to become part of the politics to influence. Uh, that's, uh, I'm sure that that's right. However, this raises a uh, question that uh, getting involved in politics as we know it, I mean, it's, uh, let me say this, it's pretty much a system created by adults. It's not really designed by young people, how our political world uh, goes around. I believe that we need other platforms that there is an easier or doesn't include uh, huge steps to take. So what would be your ideas that what would, could be other easier platforms that uh, young people would like to uh, uh, take uh, in use if uh, they are not interested? I, I hope that many are interested in getting politics and change it, mm. but it's not for everyone, that's for sure. So what other options you could uh, suggest? Well, uh, this is not an idea, but this is just a comment. Uh, when I uh, spoke about uh, it's hard to get involved in this kind of stuff, uh, maybe politics was not the best uh, word option to use, but that was the first to come in mind, and I think it's a pretty uh, large thing to talk about, of course, and it's created by adults, and that's good. Um, <laughs> but maybe the other platforms would be a better word to use in that. And that's kind of what I meant, but politics just came naturally out of my mouth. Not just adults, old, white, straight men, usually. <laughs> Good point. One of the most common things that uh, the groups mentioned was that, is our voice heard? 
and when we're talking about the European Union, many of you said that it feels like it's too far away from your everyday lives. You either don't know what's happening there or what should be done. So I'm posing the question to the decision makers over here. Um, what should we do in concrete terms to get these wonderful active youth people actually engaged in our decision-making processes? And uh, let the decision makers mm -hmm. answer first and then we'll hear your concrete examples. It's no doubt that these young people are engaged <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot, a lot more in the audience. So there are young people that are very interested in politics and in, interested in making an impact in, the, in their lives and in, in the world. And um, addressing the previous question, if I may, I, I, I'd like to disagree a bit because uh, recalling my own youth, we were with some of my friends, we were obsessed by saving the world by waste management and recycling. That was in the 90s when we did not recycle that much as we do now. But we didn't listen to anyone. We just started waste management, which was actually recycling. And, and that was very political. Of course, it wasn't related to any political party. But of course, it was political. And I think today's young people have their own ideas. Waste management is pretty much organized already. But there are other things uh, relating to climate change. And uh, you, know, you know better than me. So the world is open for young people to be active in NGOs, start your own organizations or be, become members of the political parties, youth organizations or political parties. And I can assure you that in the framework of the European Union, young people are very much respected and, and they are forums for young people to be heard. And this conference of the future of Europe is, is, is one of them. So I welcome all the young people because the future is yours. Yeah, uh, my opinion is that uh, we have to create more platforms with with the youth and old uh, politicians to, to to where we can talk about the issues what 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 is important for the for the youth people, environment issues, education, whatever, transport, transportation, like like we heard, it's in, important. So so we need connections more and more in the future, not, not just having the youth con conference and the others, adults co conference, but we have to uh, change our, our um, minds, minds in, uh, together more and more. Uh, Ms. Vehkabera, do you have any concrete examples from all how this collaboration and dialogue yeah, is happening Yeah, we have here? the Youth, youth uh, Council here and, and we are meeting uh, many, many times in the year and discussing about the, about the things, what, what is important in, in daily life. And, and we, we also have the, the um, uh, what is the, <laughs> we have the mentors, mentors. mentors <laughs> yes, we, yes, men's, mental counselors. Uh, and and we, are, we are sharing our opinions together uh, and, and, and meetings, meetings several times. So how does this sound, uh, youth representatives? Well, I, have, I am in the only youth council, so I know concretely what you're talking about. Yeah. And one of the things that will, will make people easier to get into and get interested into social things, what's happening around things, like having more just open conversations in classrooms mm. about things that is happening around us all the time. But many people don't know what's happening. Many people don't even care, but bringing it to their everyday lives in school could maybe make them more interested in. Uh, and yeah, and about the conversation that uh, we might have in class, or should have, of course, uh, I think that we should make clear in schools the difference between hate speech and giving an opinion, because especially in Finland, yeah. it's <laughs> very faded, it's very unclear, and that's why most of the young people are very, very afraid of giving your opinion. They are afraid of getting bullied of course mm -hmm. so we should or being like having comebacks um that are hate speech and bullying racism etc there are, that should be really like highlighted the difference between hate speech and giving an opinion Thanks. daria and maxim uh, do you have something to comment on this 
Just I so I agree so much with that because like where is this line between uh, my honest opinion and being straightforwardly racist? A lot of people just don't see that, unfortunately. And uh, about the other topic, as uh, Daria mentioned when presenting the things that they have discussed about, it's very important that we could have meetings together with older politi politicians. politicians? Politicians. Politicians, yes, yes, and younger ones, because sometimes it goes like the older ones decide and then younger ones comment and mm. uh, tell what's wrong. So I think that <laughs> we should <laughs> focus on creating together okay. so we could get like the whole population's uh, opinions and create something that's good for old people and young people so we wouldn't have to come and criticize afterwards when the decision decisions have already been made. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, do, do you have the feeling that this event is what you want, because I wanted to organize this tour in a way that I'm not telling everybody mm. how I see the future of Europe, but I'm, but I'm asking and I'm listening. Do you, do you get the point that I'm... Yeah, this is, this is yeah. definitely what we should have more, and more of this in a more like casual way. Uh, mm. That would be more avail available for people who are not in... Um, who are not like that social or might be scared to present themselves, but more something like this. This is definitely good for the young people. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, Maxim, you had your yeah. hand. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the question was also about the ensuring the uh, youth uh, participation and engagement in all the fields. And I would like to just maybe express my viewpoint that, of course, uh, uh, if let's imagine that there is a special law that introduces the special quota in all the sectors of economy, political issues, uh, uh, NGO sector, etc., that uh, some specific percent of the use should, must be presented, must be presented. Of course, I guess that this kind of a quotation would uh, uh, impose uh, straightforward rejection. And I guess this is not what is, uh, uh, of course, needed. So, therefore, uh, the two ways in my view, should be uh, and actually are being implemented. The first is the high level of education because the high level education um, gives the opportunity to, to get a better job and this is uh, one of the main uh, things that we do in our lives. So the youth should get better education and therefore they will get high paid uh, jobs that they are, they are interested in. And the second point is yes, having various uh, advisory, consultative uh, councils uh, with the youth representation that uh, will uh, give several uh, uh, viewpoints or guidelines for the policy and decision makers and that's how I think uh, things will work and develop in a better way. It's very, very to connect points. it. Yeah, definitely. Mm. We have a question coming from the audience. Um, this is more of a, a note. Um, thank you for this interesting uh, discussion. Um, I would like to bring some indigenous point of view. Um, I like about indigenous peoples, um, we, don't, we don't see youth just as future, but we see youth as now. And that's really something that, that um, other people can also learn from us. Uh, also about, um, we many times speak uh, about Europe and EU ob um, without borders. Uh, for indigenous youth, it actually kind of uh, makes borders because, um, for example, here in my, on my patch, I have Finland when I'm from Satmi, um, and we have more common with um, Arctic indigenous peoples in Canada um, and um, USA. Um, so um, what are the borders and are we actually making more borders? We talk, talk about immigration but we don't talk about the people who have lived here for thousands of years. Um, this is no. Uh, this next one is not a critic towards Oulu city, um, but I would like to um, point out and uh, have everybody to think that uh, when we watch these videos about Oulu, uh, there were huskies, uh, which are not original to Finland, but we didn't have any Sami people. And Oulu is the biggest Sami village in Finland. So uh, to uh, members from Oulu, and so how we perceive Oulu um, from 
your point of view and my point of view, we have many students, we have many children, families. So let's expand the idea of about indigenous peoples and bring us to the table and to the cities. Thank you. A very you are absolutely yes. right. Thank there you of, of your opinion. A very, very important point. So how can we better understand each other that while, while we're working together, we also remember the inclusion. That we understand that we come from very different backgrounds. So in your opinion, how can we still enhance this kind of collaboration in, in the way we work? This kind, what kind could you? This kind of collaboration in the way we work the, so that we understand the world better around us. Well, I think that we should, of course, give everyone an equal um, chance to uh, say their opinion. But maybe if there's stuff like this missing, we should give um, maybe a bigger chance for indigenous, in indigenous. indigenous people or uh, other um, uh, groups of people like this. And I think that maybe we should focus on people who have not uh, given their voice yet. We, we should think about, of course it's amazing that there's many people who are actually telling their opinion, but we should focus on who haven't given it yet, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. That, that was exactly what I had in mind when we decided that we are going to take extremely seriously this conference for the Future of Europe thing and that we are going to organize this We Are Europe tour, because many times when we discuss Europe, they are the only ones, you know, <laughs> voicing themselves that, that are always there discussing Europe. So I wanted to do this in a different way. And we went to Utsioki and we, we discussed with, with Sami indigenous people and, and, and the people who came in, in, in that event without any prejudice. And I, I think it was quite successful. And I myself, I learned a lot about this borderless life of indigenous people in the, in the Sami land and in that area where the border to Norway is actually only a, you know, a border, but the people are living across the border in their everyday lives. So I think we should always keep in mind, even when we are discussing the very difficult questions, I took notice that you raised also the situation between Belarus and, and Poland and so on. When we are discussing uh, occasions like this, we should always bear in mind that we are talking about human beings, that we are all equal and we are all people and we are all somebody's daughters and, and sons and, and children and so on. And I think that gives us a great value when we fa face each other. At least I'm, a, I'm an advocate of human rights and I'm, I'm a firm believer in the European Union. Uh, basic values, which are not actually only European Union values, but they are United Nations values, and they belong to people in Russia as well, and people all over the world. Yes, and maybe several comments, since uh, the, the question uh, devoted to how we should upkeep the level of the cooperation, and I think that the COVID pandemic uh, has uh, already and still is producing uh, many risks in uh, and challenges for keeping this uh, cooperation uh, alive and to develop in this cooperation because uh, we should develop it, of course. And I think that the uh, one of the solutions to this aspect is uh, finding synergies uh, between uh, many other forms of cooperation. For example, synergies between the Barents cooperation and the cooperation within the Arctic Council chairmanship. Yeah, and since we uh, and since the Russia is now a chairman uh, has holding chairmanship in the Arctic Council and also a part of the Barents region. I guess some synergies uh, can be found and will be found and uh, with the other forms like the Nordic cooperation, uh, the cooperation within the Sea Baltic states and many other formats that can contribute to uh, the work of each other. Yes, and also the Parent Regional Youth Forum, yep. which mm. is very important and I'm so proud of you being active mm. in that forum. It, it's utmost important. I'm scaling the audience if we have questions from there or from the chat. We don't at the moment, but um, coming back to the Barents Youth Council in 2022, the themes there of it. There is. Uh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. there is. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So we are. Uh, 
Irina Pirozhinska is saying, we have to show what we are proud of. Sport and education, green focus, innovation, help people to see it easily uh, from the youth board, make a book manual, political work for children, ABCs <laughs> of politics. I don't think you need to do that for children, but maybe for adults too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a very good comment over there. Uh, but yes, so I was talking about the Barons Youth Council and the, te and the themes for 2022. So we're talking about volunteering, cooperation with other Arctic regions and indi indigenous um, rights and um, questions that should be brought out to the, the uh, public and the youth in this area. So what are the concrete actions and how will this, these themes will take place next year when everything seems to be so uncertain? So was it? Yeah. If it, let let me start being a member of the Barnes Regional Youth Council. Yeah. The there are priorities that are uh, provided in the Barnes uh, Regional Youth Program, and yeah, definite. Yeah, available in the lobby and uh, hopefully in all, all of your bags. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we are having, um, the Barons Regional Youth Council is having an annual event uh, this uh, Saturday and is having an uh, organization meeting this Sunday. And uh, definitely the list of the events uh, to address these issues uh, will be uh, developed. We already have some ideas and we will structureize it and uh, definitely will provide the uh, uh, youth of the Barons region with the ideas and the events that they can uh, participate and contribute to uh, to address uh, the issues that you have listed. And we also have an indigenous representative within our council. Yeah, we have a member from each region of the Barons uh, Euroarctic area and we have uh, one more uh, representative from the indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we have a question from the audience, so can we get the mic? The mic is over here. One, but... <laughs> Okay. Another okay. question. Yeah, sorry, I just couldn't, couldn't resist myself. So sorry for the old people to take the floor <laughs> for, from the front. But I, I'm really happy that that you mentioned about the work and and coming meeting. I'm, I will actually give you in a video conference and participate in your meeting also on Saturday, uh, and virtually like the day, the day everything. But just the two words which I think is important to to mention to you, uh, which I said in the beginning. During our presidency, the Barent Youth Council is invited to every single major event that we have, including every single meeting that we have for senior officials. And we do hope that all the working groups, based of, of course, their own decisions, would be inviting you to participate. To the challenge, like we've been challenged here several times today by various participants, but also giving your views and ideas in, in, in there. And what we actually created with, we sincerely hope that this event today is the beginning of, of the broader Youth Council supporting the, the, the Barents Youth Council, but having a broader audience and broader members which will be contributing throughout these two years. What, what I say, a very concrete suggestion or proposal is, we would like to create this kind of digital platform for the youth, which will create even that manuscript book about how to make politics and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so we want to have all of these kind of items in this digital platform. And thanks to the, with the help of the city of Oulu, we are making progress. Yesterday we had the first discussion on that, and, and this is the initiation of, of this long march forward, which hopefully will be then presented at least to the prime ministers and to the foreign ministers, and with the permission of the Europe minister, I think we should also present to the Europe minister in the, in the future. <laughs> Wonderful news. Uh, and then we had another question or comment from the audience. Um, so who was it? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just raise your hand. I can't see. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. In, in, in the absence of uh, raised hand, I don't see any raised hand. But my, may I present myself? Uh, Roman Gokke, working for the International Barons Secretariat, and we follow the Finnish BEAC chairmanship. Uh, sorry, presidency is the right word to use. But my, my small observation, since I've been following the um, Barons Corporation on the regional level for a time, for a long time, and I see that we have a missing uh, link to the local level. So we have the national level. I'm very happy to see both minister and, and the city representative in the same panel. Uh, but the Barons uh, Corporation is structured it's on the national and regional level. And yeah. those working groups that Yari Villen mentioned, 
actually are lacking the representative from the cities. And maybe in the future we should see how to better connect the local level to those working groups, because big cities like Oulu, Arkhangelsk, Murmansk, Tromsø, Lulio, Umeå are not represented, unfortunately, in, in those uh, official meetings. So maybe it's uh, something to, for us to, to work on uh, as, uh, as uh, civil servants, to better actually reach out for the youth in, in, the, in the region. Just as a, as a comment. Thank you. Yeah, that is actually, if I if I may, what I had in mind. I needed to took took my notes to to bring it fresh in my memory. But there are cross border cooperation programs programs between EU and our neighbors, and they are very relevant in in this context. Namely, these projects also involve youth. For instance, there is Colarctic Bridge mm -hmm. project, and this Colarctic Bridge project actually bridges activities of universities students and local enterprises to address employability and growth in the Colarctic region, Finland, Sweden, Norway and Russia. And this is, is not uh, exactly what you meant, but close enough to be uh, mentioned here in, in the seminar. So Colarctic Bridge program, so there are already instruments, but we need to uh, enforce them. But I'm pr pretty sure that Tutti and Jari will, will, will hear uh, Ideas of the of the youth. If if you want some kind of events or or uh, conference or or what what activities as well uh, uh, at all. So so I'm I'm pretty sure that you will will hear the the ideas. The presence here is like yeah. a sign of commitment from our side. <laughs> <laughs> more engagement, more casual engagement, of course, and more platforms where uh, the youth can really voice their opinions and worries and hopes. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, yes, over there. Hi, my name is Juha Rasenen, and, uh, and this is not like the comment, this is more like the idea. And for, like, I am half born in Yuga. I don't know, many people doesn't know that, it's in North Carolina. And then I did live in the Joensuu, maybe somebody knows that city, it's a little bit bigger. And now I'm living in Helsinki, I'm studying there at Univers University of Helsinki. And I have been thinking when I did take the like this that I was looking like the place to study. Uh, there was one big thing why I did go to Helsinki, and that the reason was that that I want uh, like to get like the best studies what I could get uh, on my like science field, which is computer science. And I am a bit worried that that the science and studies uh, is centralizing in the, these big cities. And example, if we look up the Nurmes, the, I don't know, do you know that? <laughs> it's a small city, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. old town in North Korea or uh, somebody else, small cities and towns there. And we should decentralize studies and science. Example, using satellite campuses or MOOCs and more like, and one big thing we did come, uh, we did discuss this in the lunch with some teacher here, I don't see. Ah, oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> so we did discuss that, that on the lower education level, like Ammattikoulu. Mm. Yeah, like on that level, there is like housing, apartments for studies that they can come there for the weeks and study and then go back to there, uh, like where they're from. But if we go to check out how the like universities works, most of the students get their own flats they rent them or get student apartments, but they don't visit so much anymore from their home town or village. And that is a little bit poor because uh, for many studies, they don't need to be there to get the studies. They need to be there just a couple of months, couple of periods. So it would be handy that they could take their studies under their village, maybe in satellite campus, meet other students in that village or town. And then when they need to go to big city, they can go there and there will be apartments for them for a couple of periods when they need to be there. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks. Very important point. Uh, the youth representatives, do you feel that this is a situation where we would need to be uh, a bit better? Like, are there opportunities for you to uh, study, educate yourselves or 
That's a very important point, by the way, about the decentralization of education, because as far as uh, computer science and data science is concerned, maybe it's a bit easier, I'm not so sure, but I remember when I was looking for education programs uh, in like master's degrees and PhDs, I noticed that in the universities of La Peranta, Yoensu, and other smaller towns that I looked at, there weren't even adequate pro pro programs to apply to. So only Tampere, Turku, Helsinki and Oulu, um, the bigger cities, uh, 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 allowed uh, to apply. But what about humanities and what about uh, other subjects? Uh, do we really need to go to Helsinki to study that? That's a good question. I think that mm. is really important. And we should not only be in the decentralized universities, but also like lower education, middle school, and even before that, there's a lot of schools are now centralizing high schools, middle schools, and village schools are closing up in all and around here. I have many friends who in middle school have to come from Sanginoki from like 20 kilometers tops away and they have no, they had to rent a taxi to there every day and when their local school shut down when she was in third grade or something. It not really, really great. So sad. And yeah, and in the morning we heard, we learned that uh, the old university also have a network uh, that uh, uh, offers uh, joint degree programs mm -hmm. with other universities in mm -hmm. Europe. And I guess uh, this uh, development of this, uh, of the variety of the joint degree programs in the northern universities would also um, make these particular universities and the cities they are located in more attractive for the youth to remain in these cities. Mm. And we have one more audience question, mm. comment. Okay, thanks. So, um, my name is Hanna Honkamäkilä. I'm a manager of the International Affairs at the Council of Oulu Region, regional representative. Um, just want to thank you all. We have been also uh, participating in organizing this event. I'm so happy to see you all here. I, I see you are participating when you are here. Uh, I, uh, I have heard you talking, and, and it's, um, I can hear that some of you have been uh, stressed or nervous, and I'm so happy that you came and you participated and, and uh, uh, said what you wanted to say, or you will say after this, because I promise you we will continue this cooperation. And the region will also be... Uh, cooperating with the city and all the representatives from the region in the Barents and in the European Union cooperation. But uh, big thanks to the city of Oulu and for the Barents presidency and all the people who have been doing this. But I promise we will continue. Thanks. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. That's a wonderful promise. <laughs> And dear panelists, we've only scratched the surface with our discussion, but time is almost up. So what I need you to do next is to summarize your key message. One thing that you would like the audience, the decision makers, the people at home, remember from your working groups or from your uh, respective organization. What would be your key message to the audience and to the world? And let's start with Maxim, if that's okay, and then we continue. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so my group was dealing with the questions uh, regarding the Arctic, uh, northern, remote and rural areas. So I would say that uh, to combat the emigration from the north, uh, the issues of education, infrastructure and opportunities in general should be addressed. And I'm from the group that where we discussed about the environment and climate change. And I would like to remind all the young people that uh, this is also something that we discussed about. When we think about climate change and changing things, we need to remind them that this is not to stop the entire, entire thing, because that will definitely seem hopeless. We need to remind them that we are trying to slow it down. That gives them a, a lot more hope and maybe like... Maybe they even want to do more, and it seems a bit more easier when we remind them that it's to slow down the process and not to stop the entire thing, because that would be impossible for us, at least right now. And yeah, that's a message that I want to send. Thank you. I have three words, diversity, equality, and globalization. Well, I would like to say that even if we had a lot of worries and fears, we also have to remember to have hope and that together with unity and with cooperation, we can get past those fears and worries. 
Thank you. Oulu City Chair uh, Vehkaperä. Yeah, my message to you is, is that uh, be brave and continue to act where, wherever you are and do the, do the politics is in, in your uh, way, what, what you have chosen. And, and let's, let's meet together in the future as well. Minister Tuppurainen, in the beginning I was asking for your initial reaction of the discussion, but what is now your conclusion of what we've been discussing here today? I am so impressed. Thank you so much for this discussion. And this really reminds me that youth is not a matter of future. Youth is a matter of today, the present. You are here and you are capable and you have all the means in the world to make an impact. I'm here for you to provide an opportunity as far as I can as Minister for European Affairs. I will make sure that the voices raised today will be heard at the European level. And I hope that this part, uh, this Arctic and Parents uh, Euro-Arctic Council uh, dimension in this reminds us all what Daria just said. Uh, that we are all equal and we live in a globalized world and human rights, they belong to everybody everywhere in the world. Tytti Tuppuranen, Mirja Vehkaperä, Aralmiina Irvankoski, Armida Hämäläinen, Daria Zaykovska ja Maxim Marchenkov. Thank you so much for sharing your viewpoints and the discussion that we had. And I think we need to give them a big round of applause for all the points we've made. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And this was the youth event of our We Are Europe Day, where we talked and envisioned the now and then and the future of Europe. And although the event is about to end right now, as we heard, the work certainly is not. So the second part of today will also continue in H2O, where we'll be meeting with Minister Tuppurainen and the representatives here from the, uh, from the event at uh, 3.30. But as a conclusion point from someone who's just been listening to the discussion, I hope to convey a message of hope, a theme that we also talked about. So the hashtag of this event is the future is yours. And I somehow like to think that in the European Union, in Europe, the two letters, the abbreviation of what we use, it, what we use about it, EU, it is actually envisioned over there. So the EU could be encourage yourself to change. And that might be the message that I would like to leave you with. And hopefully you will carry that in your heart right now. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, like in, uh, you are yeah. self. That's uh, like a uh, used in uh, slang kind of. I wanna, I, are, I, wanna, I wanna fix this because yeah. I am also young, only 20 plus, <laughs> I spell yourself with you are so that's common. We don't blame you. Let's give a big hand to Simo, our great moderator. So great job today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And do enjoy the coffees and then we continue with our daily lives. Thank you so much for joining. It's been wonderful to meet you all. Thank you. <laughs>